Do you think the West is coming up with this thing that's destroying their own society and now they're exporting it worldwide, including to India? They've run out of problems. Mm. So they're creating problems. So they're creating problems where none exists. Mm. You know, this is like, uh, you know, uh, basically, is assume I'm your employee. Mm. You found me in a very bad state. You paid for all my medical things. But uh -huh. now I've gotten used to taking four days off a week instead. Right. Okay. So you then come and say, Ki, uh, Bhai Abhijit, ab to tum theek ho gaye ho. Come work five days a week like everybody else. Huh. Sir, you know, I have psychological... Now I've suddenly invented a psychological problem. Mm. Sir, I'm in deep depression, sir. Then you send me to a psychiatrist. All the reports come out. I still say, Sir, I don't think the psychiatrist is good, sir. Okay, then you... Uh, uh, procure me um, antidepressants and things illegally. Uh, let's sort it out. Oh, you abused me. Mm. I want a $5 million settlement. Yes. This is what is happening out there, but this is classic left. Mm. Yes, it is. They create divisions where none exist. Yes. They create social fissures where none exist. Yes. Because what they do is they prey on the weak. They are the worst kind of parasites. Mm. They will create a victim where no victim exists. They will make you feel like a piece of shit hmm. so that you join them. Mm, yes. It is a coalition of gripe. It is a coalition of failure. It is a coalition of uh, 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 essentially revisionism. Hmm. Hmm? Uh, of course, they'll give it all their technical jargon and claim you are the revisionist and we are the actual protagonist or whatever. Yes. But this is what they do. Hmm. And you know, this is... One of the great ironies of nature, isn't it, that um, America thought it defeated communism when the USSR fell. Mm. And what the communists did was that they dumped the body of Russia and like a demonic possession, <laughs> they went and possessed American scholarship. Yes. And it's been one of those latent, uh, you know, like a tapeworm. Mm. It takes years before you understand that you have a tapeworm problem. Decades sometimes. Decades sometimes. Uh, so it's like eating raw pork and getting tapeworm, mm. where the tapeworm has finally gotten to the brain. They did a slow academic capture. Yes. Then they uh, did an institutional capture. Mm. And now, you know, there's no going back from here now. It's too, I, it's too far gone. The rot is too deep. The cancer yes. has spread. There is no amount of chemotherapy that can... They will destroy America. Let's be very clear about yes. it. Mm -hmm. uh, they will destroy America. There is no fight back because I think the right, it's a very valiant fight. I admire my friends for fighting. Mm -hmm. But they're fighting a rare guard. They're fighting, you know, the last stand. Once you open the borders and let that's people rush in, that's it. That's the end of it. Yeah. And you know, the kind of scamsters that are being employed, you know, the uh, 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 the chronically unemployed, you have to have DEI training, hmm. diversity, yes. uh, 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 something, bullshit, diversity, something training. Bullshit, uh, yeah. diversity training. Yeah. You now need to have certification for everything, otherwise it won't be. And now companies also have to sponsor all this. And mind you, do you know why all the companies have gone along with this? Do you remember what happened to Nokia? Because this happened in our lifetime. Hmm. I don't know if all our audience, our audience might be quite young. But when we were growing up, I still remember when I first saw a Nokia phone and I was yeah. like, oh my God. Yes. And it was like a big phone. Remember, mm. they were like this big and they were quite heavy. They used to be 1.1 kilos or 1.2 <laughs> kilos or something like that. Mm. And it used to look like an idiot. I mean, those days you used to look like very cool because it was lack, uh, it, it, in those days it used to cost 1.2 lakhs. I think the entry level model was 80,000 rupees and mm. things like that. It used to go around talking on it. Mm. They became smaller, better, better, better. And then boom, Nokia vanishes within our lifetime. Yes. We have seen absolute world dominance by a company and that company being snuffed out pathetically within our lifetime. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, that is what technology replacement does. Hmm. So what companies have realized is, uh, and all of this happened with freedom of expression where church and dogma and state were, uh, not state, but church and dogma were beaten back, mm. you could be heretical, you could be blasphemous. Yes. That is the 
root of in all uh, uh, innovation. Hmm. That is where the great scientific revolution happened in the West and that is where the industrial revolution happened because of that and that is why the West dominance came about. Yes. It was because of the reformation. And the reformation was a starting process. Of course, Martin Luther was an even worse bigot than the Pope at that point. <laughs> and that's a different matter. Hmm. But that's how it starts off. What happens in this process is, so what happened there is that you have this whole freedom of the mind hmm. which brings about innovation. Yes. It could not happen in the dark ages. Why? Because everything was controlled by dogma yes. and conflict. Yes. Small feudal states constantly fighting each other. You had no idea of where life was. And mostly you had an overweening church that would burn you alive for heresy or witch hunts or whatever crap. Yes. They are bringing in that thought policing again. Mm. Hate speech is the first Attempts at thought policing, taking you back to the 7th century, the 8th century, the 9th century, the 10th century. Because when you're terrorized, you can't innovate. Yes. And so the companies that are dominant today will always remain dominant because mm. the general rate of innovation will come down. Mm. It is also a fantastic management tool because your team will not be able to innovate and replace you. They will constantly be looking to suck up to you because you never know when you will get accused of me too or she too or whatever nonsense or uh, a thought crime or a racial thought crime or gender thought crime. So you are so scared. You just want to get to work. You want to do your work and you want to get out of work. So it's fantastic for F grade managements who don't want to see boardroom coups. It is fantastic for corporations as a whole and their shareholders to prevent in the rapid to slow down the rate of innovation so that they don't become obsolete and don't face a Nokia-like situation. If you technically look at it, it's a fantastic tool of social control. Yes. The problem is in the process of social control, you have lost America. Yeah. And everything that made America great. Best of luck to you. And now they're exporting it worldwide. I mean, we have we are seeing the first uh, beginnings of this in India as well now, right? It's they? never going to come into India. Okay. Uh, you've got some trash who uh, do this kind of crap. Hmm. Um, have you seen them get any traction? Not yet. Not thus far. But it, we are seeing these. Uh, we are it seeing... won't because these are first world problems. We hmm. have enough real problems to oh. have these Im uh, to go on to these imagined problems. Hmm. Once we reach about thirty, forty thousand dollars per capita, yeah, uh, then. I see a great danger of this bullshit coming here. But mm. remember, all of this crap actually started in France. It was called the <laughs> Soissons whatever. Uh, it was people like, uh, who was it? Andre Foucault? Gide or Foucault? Foucault. Foucault. Who was a dirty child molesting <laughs> yeah, piece of shit. Totally. A sick, dirty fellow who should have been castrated and uh, guillotined. Uh, but France is very smart. Mm. When they find these 66 pedophiles, all of whom are thought leaders, mm. uh, they export them to America. Yes. And uh, they spread their rot there. Mm. And Americans being trusting creatures, oh, look at these fancy little French people coming here and talking to us and all funny jargon. And, you know, oh, my God, that sounds so sweet. It's not a croissant. It's a croissant. And, oh, my God, that's so cute. And, oh, my God. I didn't understand a word of what you said, but I love listening to you talking to you in my French, uh, your funny French, sexy French accent. Da, 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 da. It becomes the theory out there. It mm. becomes fantastic. And mm. in time the Soviet Union falls, you find the perfect new victim card to play. Fusion of toxicity. To this day, mm. the one country that it has not touched in the developed world is France. Yes, right. Because the France, the French are very clear about their first principles. You know, France is the only country where the left accuses the right of not being uh, 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 secular enough. Mm. You know, they're like, uh, you are, it was the left that was accusing Marine Le Pen of pandering to Islamists saying you're not being hard enough on them. Okay. All right, Mélenchon mm. mm -hmm. was accusing Marine Le Pen. Mm -hmm. Normally, it is the other way. So the other way around, yeah. Uh, but here, every French politician, because of the way what I said, a foreign, uh, our foreign service needs to be trained up. Mm -hmm. Those schools, those French bureaucratic schools are so good. Those first principles and the applications of thought mm -hmm. 
what the Israelis do to a military problem, the French do to a sociological problem. Mm. The French are the Israeli, uh, what the Israeli military is to problem solving, to military problem solving and technology problem solving, the French are to humanities problem solving. Mm. They identify rotters and kick them out. They, uh, 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 they know their first principles, they know how to train their things. You will never see this bullshit come in France. Right. So they're very clear about that. Mm. Uh, we need to build that kind of a French system. See, they're very clear on their principles of secularism. They're very clear on their laws. Mm. They never violate their laws. They always stick within that. They know what laicite means. In India, we still don't understand what dharma nirpaksh means. Right, yes. Mm. Um, so it's, uh, I'd say the French model is a fantastic model, mm. at least in bureaucracy training. Let's get the French down. Let's get a whole lot of retired French bureaucrats to train up our bureaucrats at any rate. Mm. You know, I had a French bureaucrat studying with me in Australia. Every six months he'd be flown, and he had still not joined the bureaucracy because he was finishing his bachelor's degree, but had been selected for the intake. Okay. Every six months he'd be flown back to Paris, mm -hmm. even before he had joined, mm -hmm. to do pre-starting courses and things like that. That is the amount they invested in their bureaucrats. bureaucrats. Mm. And the bureaucrats are very down to earth. You'll never get a bureaucrat who'll say, Sandhi, you know my father? Uh, coming back to India, what do you think of the situation in, no in the Northeast? The, the, the Manipur situation, Manipur is still aflame kind of. What do you think is the root cause of this? Largely the free hand that was given to Christian missionaries to go there and spread their bile. Indeed. Mm. Mm. Uh, because, you know, the problem is, uh, the West seems to think of all Christianity as being first world Christianity. Mm. First world Christianity in Italy and America is very nice, you see. Mm. Your uh, local priest is kind of your local community counselor. Yes. You have a problem when he's not abusing your kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You, you go to him, you have a chat with him, he'll provide counseling services, he'll help you get through things. He's more like a support mechanism. Mm. Third world Christianity is not like that. Mm. Third world Christianity is the Christianity that goes around burning witches. Yes. Burning albinos. Remember a lot of the albino burnings in Africa. Africa, is, yes. Uh, is sanctioned by the church. Mm. All the gay killings in Africa are sanctioned mm. by the church. Mm. Several churches. And people don't want to talk about this, but uh, in the Northeast, several witches are killed every year. I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's never reported as such, but they are killed every year. Wow. Mm. Okay. It's a very nasty, mean, land-grabbing thuggery, the way feudal uh, Christianity was at one point of time, 7th century, 8th century, 9th, 10th, 11th, whatever uh, Christianity was. Um, so you're never going to be able to make that point there. And now the damage is done. All the diversity of that area.